Well, on a day like today, there's only one thing to do. And that's go in the greenhouse and sow some seeds. pretty miserable out there today um, so I don't think it's stopped raining since about four o'clock this morning so the greenhouse and sowing seeds is the best bet for me today and uh, just one tip I'd like to show you uh, with these um, with these seeds if you can get a, a box of them off Amazon they're just paper clips and uh, they fit nicely there in with your um, cassette cartridges for your seeds and uh, when you've opened a packet just put them on top and your seeds as you can see they won't fall out uh, many a time we open them at the bottom so we store them upside down and we pick them up to read the packet and they all fall out so that works for me and a uh, good place to store it is where you need it with your seeds so I'm going to be sowing um, two lots of spinach today and some lettuce, some chicory and radish and also some peas as well. I think that spinach is a bit uh, underrated. It's, uh, it's a nice veg. You can uh, pick it for your salads and also for cooking. So what I shall be doing, I've got two varieties here. One's called red vein and one's perpetual spinach. It is part of the beet family and uh, the ones that I should be growing for picking for salads, I shall be sowing in, um, in about groups of four or five. And the ones that I'll be growing for cooking, I shall just put two in each, in each module. These modules are Charles Dowdin's, uh, excellent quality. These 60 cells, they're not very big, but um, they are for sowing get them going and then potting them straight on again. They're not for keeping in for too long. Um, this will be the first real season that I've used them. I did, I did trial them a little bit at the end of last season, but this will be my first proper season using these. So I'll see how we get on with them. And uh, some peas that I'm sowing, these will go into the polytunnel. Uh, uh, Hurst green shaft, good variety, and hopefully they'll be out before I want to get me tomatoes in and I'm going to be sewing these in the old trays that I used to use, these uh, thinner plastic ones. The only problem with these is, is getting them out. You have to crease the bottoms to push them out. And um, I do find that it can trap the roots on those. But I shall be putting two or three seeds in each one of those for the peas. And as soon as they get established, they will go straight out into the polytunnel. It might interest you to know that um, my seed trays I never wash them. They've never been washed and I never have washed them. But what I do do with them is when I finish with them, I empty all the, all the compost out into the compost bin where I save all my potting compost and I leave them in here till they dry and then they go stored away in the shed. They're not chucked outside the greenhouse door, uh, getting wet and, and all winter and algae growing all over them. Uh, but so they're, they're emptied, dried off I'm stored straight away and I've never had a problem and uh, you can see there's still a bit of last year's compost in there but it's all dry and clean and I just sew straight into them um, so it's up to you whether you wash your own trays or not it's a big job washing trays and pots and all that and it is a day for, uh, that you can do it inside on a day like today when it's raining but for me I never done it and I've never had a problem if I did have a problem with with algae or, or mould in my seed trays or anything like that, then yes, by all means, I wash them. But otherwise, no, I don't bother. And for sowing these, all I do is just make small indentations like that. And um, I shall water these from the bottom and uh, sieve compost straight over the top. And uh, 
pretty much that's all about there is with the seed sown for these. I shall just get myself set up and bring you back. Now, uh, spinach is definitely a low temperature crop. Um, if you sow it now early, you'll uh, you'll get a good crop before it goes to seed. About end of June, July, August, it, uh, it does tend to go to seed with the heat. So if you get a crop in now, and then also if you sow again in August, September, beginning of September, you'll get a crop over winter. Uh, you can just see the seeds there. The other ones uh, on the perpetual spinach, they're very much like um, beetroot. Um, these here, are this uh, red vein one, I believe is a single seed, a mono seed, and the um, perpetual spinach is uh, one of, which is a cluster of seeds. So I'm just gonna put um, two in the one row and uh, I shall be putting um, three or four in the next row. I'm only sowing half a dozen of, uh, of each for now. I shall sow a few more in uh, a couple of weeks or so. I find it easier for me to put them in this little dish and um, sow them like this. You can see which seeds you're putting in and how many you've got on your finger. Um, a lot of people just sprinkle them out of the packet, whatever suits you. So I've put four in the one row and I've just put two in the others. The ones with two, which will be for the cooking side, I might even thin them down to one or leave, leave a couple as two and a couple of one. And uh, I have just marked I mark mine with numbers and then write them in a book and then I've got I can refer back to them when I've sown things and what I've sown and what varieties and then uh, paper clip on there and everything then is um, all safe and your seeds won't fall out then so I'll carry on sowing these I've got some lettuce to sow uh, some chicory which I've not grown before and then some radish and uh, I'll bring you back after I've sown all these, you don't want to see that. <coughs> Peas I'm just sowing most of them in twos, the odd one I'll have three in and uh, as soon as they're up and about an inch high I shall pop them out then straight into the polytunnel. Uh, first time I've grown peas in the polytunnel. Um, it was a suggestion by uh, Johnny from Johnny's Kitchen Garden. If you want to pop over and have a look at his channel. Um, he's uh, doing an excellent job in his garden of uh, what things that he grows and uh, he talks you through why he's growing them and for what reason and uh, mostly he grows um, heirloom varieties he uh, likes the history behind them uh, there isn't many f1 varieties he grows and he'll tell you about the history of the plants that he's growing so uh, do go pop along and um, give him your support that's johnny's kitchen garden and uh, that's the peas sown now. None of these will get um, any heat. I'll just show you the top of these seeds that I've sown here. And I shall just cover them with a bit of compost. These will be sieved compost. Um, most of them are multi-sown, uh, but some of the spinach is uh, single as well as multi-sown. And uh, you can see how many varieties I've got there. I will make more sowings of these, but compost is expensive. And uh, my compost is uh, Jack's Magic. It's not peat free. And, uh, and until they can provide a decent potting compost that isn't peat free, 
and a ridiculous price as well, I shall carry on using Jack's Magic. Um, I spend too much time, effort and money on my hobby um, to use uh, st things that aren't, um, aren't fit for purpose pretty well, in my opinion. So Jack's Magic is my preferred compost. Um, I hope you've picked up on some tips. Um, if it uh, helps anybody, then it's a bonus. Uh, and that's about all that I've got for you for today. So uh, hope you're all enjoying your gardening. Hope you're not all getting soaked. Um, and take care, everybody. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.